Live from the Cactus Creek at Ibri, he is the king of prime time, Ghana's undisputed entertainment laureate, and still the youngest old man in Ghana. Put your hands together, show some love for the indefatigable KSM. We're back, we're back, we're back. You know, last week, last week, just as this was ending, it was getting more exciting. So I told Honorable, Honorable, we have to make sure that we keep you for another week. And today is my third, so we consider this the Independence Day edition of the show. And boy, are we lucky to have Honorable Nisabia <laughs> for Independence Day edition. So Honorable, thank you so much for staying. We are taking a short commercial break. When we come back, we're going to ask this crucial question. How, Ghana, where is our mindset? How are we where we are now? You ready for that? Sure. Okay. So stick around, folks. When we come back, how did we get here? We'll be right back. The KSM Show. Hi folks, first of all, let me say a big, big, big thank you to all the loyal patrons of Cactus Creek. We really appreciate your patronage and thank you very, very, very much. Continue coming. And for those of you who have never been there, I wonder why. I mean, how can you not be at Cactus Creek? I don't know whether it's the, the green, the trees, I don't know if it's the pool, the conference room, the amazing, delectable dishes, Anywhere you look at it, Cactus is the place to be. So take this number and call us, make a reservation, and come by and let us pamper you. The number is 055-039-5007. At Cactus, you are a priority. Cactus Creek. It is no longer Ghana's best kept secret. It's an open secret. So serene, so heavenly. And the meals? Mm, mm, mm. Just like home cooking. Cactus Creek. Your soul will thank you. you are Call our WhatsApp 055 039 5007. Most of you are loving my jacket. Mr. Sao. Hey, me for rough. The jacket is provided by Asepa Essentials. So if you want some, this is the number to call. 0247-661983. So call Asepa and get yourself a pretty decent jacket. Thank you, folks. We're back. And last week, if you remember, before we broke, uh, we were talking about uh, domestication. And basically, uh, that has been also your platform because you say it is pragmatic domestication. We are going to go into that. But before I ask this question, uh, Honorable, uh, with all this fire, with all these ideas that you're coming up with, you know, pragmatic ideas that you believe that this is the path Ghana should be on. Are you sure we have seen the last of you? Like, uh, you know, that we are now sitting back now to, to help where possible? Or are we going to see another emergence of, should I say, the showdown man? <laughs> uh, thank you very much. Um, I think uh, at the moment what I'm doing is uh, I have to promote my business so that I can create more employment for the youth of this country. So I will devote more time on my business. It doesn't mean I'm not going to do politics. 
even if you are doing politics, you still need money. This time, everything is money. So if you don't work, how will you get the money if you don't? I don't want to be a contestant where I'll be going everywhere, begging, begging, begging. I have to make sure I have the seed money for whatever I'm doing so that people will look at what I have done or I'm doing and have confidence to also contribute. And if you can do that, then it's all business. So currently, I mean, I have a peace of mind, you know, to do my business. Just that is also setting me thinking, go, I'm aspiring to get to, you know, higher in life. And when you go to meetings and you hear people speaking, investors, then it's like in a blind man's world, one eye man is a king. Can a Japan is here, everywhere you go, can a Japan, can a Japan. When you go to big, big meetings, the people, the minds, and the ideas that they have, can a Japan, you are just a small fry. Mm. So I come back, it sets me thinking, how am I going to get there? And that's how I dream big, you know, and challenge myself. So currently, I want to concentrate on my business. It doesn't mean I'm not going to campaign. I will be there. But it's not the same as you being the candidate and going around everywhere. And you see, I don't want to be seen undermining the vice president. What some people propose, if I do, I disagree with them because if I do that, I'll be undermining the vice what president. What are they proposing? Like go. You know, go and say this, go and do that, go independent. No, I won't do it. You know. But like I said last week, I said, man shall not live by bread alone. So it's business, business, business. And that is how, you know, during the campaign, I mentioned Asia Miracle. I'll use Asia Miracle to change this country. You see, independence. Check the time Korea had independence. Check the time Malaysia had independence. Singapore and Ghana, Nigeria. And position them. And you see where we are. You know, so I think time is not on our side. We got to catch up. And there should be no break. Anybody, the speed at which we have to go to develop, anybody who is not ready to fall in line should be left behind. So that's the only way we can move this country. Now, Asia America. What is Asia America? Korea. They identified some businesses and promoted them. And they are, that is why they are doing well. What they did was that they instilled discipline in those industries. If they give you, for instance, a grant of, say, $10 million for your company, you tell them, in the next six months, I will import these machines into this country and fix them. It's written. Six months, they'll be there to check if indeed you've imported the equipment and installed them. Any excuse, they give you, oh, another three months, I'll be done. When they come and you have not done what you said or agreed with, they take the business from you. It's discipline. Mm. It's not whom you know. When you go to a Zimbang and all these, uh, go and check the number of people. I'm not afraid of them. I have to speak the truth because it's Ghana. Go and check those who got the ex Zimbang loans. Go and check. I won't say anything. Go and check. Did they give the loans based on competence or relations? And it's not only a Zimbang. All other facilities that, you know, they should be able to help industries to sustain. 
They look at faces and party affiliations. I disagree with that because NDC man can have you know, ideas, creative mind, and create a business. He will employ Guineans. Even if he employs 100%, which is not possible, to employ 100% NDC people in your company, still, they are Guineans. If MPP employs 100 MPP people, still, they are Guineans. So we need to promote Guinean businesses. That's the only way we can develop this country. A country where foreigners have shown us the way, foreign investments have shown us the way that, look, Ghana is not poor. You have Chinese and politicians are talking, oh, a Chinese man has built 100,000 liters a day, whatever. He's being supported by Chinese government. He has built a steel plant Sancho. He has built a ceramic and being supported by Chinese government. What is your government doing? What is your government doing? And I can give you a typical example of development bank that they created. They have failed. Failed in the sense that you took a grant or a loan to disperse it at 8%. The 8% could have gone directly to the uh, industries, the managers, the owners of the businesses. Meanwhile, they didn't want responsibility or a burden of chasing people for it. So they didn't want to take risk in short. Now they gave the loans to commercial banks to disperse at 10% interest, which means they have a margin of 2%. Now, the moment the commercial banks take it 10%, they have to ensure that they also get their profit to enable them to pay the 10%. So it goes up by 12 or 14. So the gap from 8 to 14 is 6%. So how are you going to compete? A Ghanaian company going to compete with an Indian company who takes a loan of 3% or with interest of 3% or 5% and you are taking in dollar term 14%. So right there, a Ghanaian is out. Three days ago, I saw a gentleman who came and was owing the bank. When I, he brought it and I read it, my brother, he's paying 32.58%. And I asked him, what is wrong with you to go and take this kind of money? Yesterday, another guy brought it. He took a loan of 1.8. And he has paid the 1.8, but the interest has accumulated to about 3.7. The first guy owes car bank about 6.6 .6 million with a loan of 1.6 million that he took. And there was a breakdown. I checked every month, 450,000 interest, 400,000 interest, my brother. That is not how Asia developed. That is why I said Asia miracle. What they did right, that now the world is moving towards Asia, not America, not Europe. Because the Asian countries, there are competition. Malaysia came here for palm, and today we import oil from Malaysia. My brother, what is wrong with us? Check the dates that they all had independence. Mm. And we say we are star of Africa. We are marching on Asian platitudes. Let's get this out and move the country. Pragmatic approach with action, with the youth in mind. We have directors and senior members of the um, agencies who are behaving like Methuselah. They don't accept young men coming in with contributions. We have to open up with new ideas. These young men, the technology. Our time, people say that, ah, how do you memorize numbers like that? Because we're doing mental. Mm -hmm. We're not allowed to take mass set to exam school. This time, computer sitting there. Their time is different. We have to accept it and embrace the youth of this country to move the, the country. 
This is what I stand for. I am for the youth. And look, there's a lady waiting for me. Last year, March, he, she put in an application, went for interview. My brother, the way this young girl is harassing me, after here I'm taking her to where she did the interview. She has no job. Meanwhile, I have seven daughters who finished university in America. And the very day they finish, their job is ready. So I feel so guilty. My girls are doing well in America. And a politician with a loud mouth here, I'm not yeah. able to create job opportunities for the youth. That is my challenge. And I think the way we can handle this or change this country to create job opportunities for the youth is to adapt to the Asia America with discipline, honesty, patriotism. Yeah. And on that note, let's take a commercial break. And when we come back, I'm very interested in this adoption of the Asian miracle with honesty, patriotism, and is this that is possible good. here? When we come back, we'll ask that question. Stick around, we'll be right back. The KSM Show. Hi folks, first of all, let me say a big, big, big thank you to all the loyal patrons of Cactus Creek. We really appreciate your patronage and thank you very, very, very much. Continue coming. And for those of you who have never been there, I wonder why. I mean, how can you not be at Cactus Creek? I don't know whether it's the, the green, the trees, I don't know if it's the pool, the conference room, the amazing, delectable dishes. Anywhere you look at it, Cactus is the place to be. So take this number and call us, make a reservation, and come by and let us pamper you. The number is 055. 039-5007. At Cactus, you are a priority. Cactus Creek. It is no longer Ghana's best kept secret. It's an open secret. So serene, so heavenly. And the meals? Mm, mm, mm. Just like home cooking. Cactus Creek. Your soul will thank you. Call our WhatsApp 055 039 5007. Most of you are loving my jacket. Mr. Sao, hey, me feel rough. The jacket is provided by Asepa Essentials. So if you want some, this is the number to call. 0247-661983. So call Asepa and get yourself a pretty decent jacket. We're back, we're back, we're back, and we're doing, we're doing something very, very crucial, Ben. And uh, fortunately, this is our independence uh, edition of the show. And we've been listening to Honorable. Honorable, you've been talking about things, domestication, you know, pragmatism, that whole list of things. My question is this. We always talk about these things. And you also said that, we, are, we talk about it a lot, but we are all book, 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 and the theory. How do we go through the transition that we become more pragmatic, more on the ground, and so that we can, when we talk about discipline, integrity, and everything, we can apply that here too. Okay. Because on, trust me, um, you did say, though, maybe when MPP or NDC is in power, you realize that they will pick winners and pick those that conform with their party beliefs and not necessarily those that are competent. 
So where do we go from here? Are we stuck with this over partisanization yeah, of yeah. everything? My brother, it's very simple. My answer to your question is that I believe that what any man has done on it, we Ghanaians, we can do it too. Therefore, the story of Singapore, Singapore was part of Malaysia. They cut it off, thinking they were what? Garbage, underdogs, whatever. And Lee Guan Yu took over with discipline, strong, fixed hands. What does Singapore become? Singapore is better than Malaysia in terms of the economy and the beauty of the country. The stone that was rejected became the cornerstone of the builder. See how they rejected uh, Singapore and Lee Guan Yu turned it around. Come to Africa. Rwanda came out of war about 12 or something years ago. War. And now, Ghanaians, we are not ashamed to refer to Rwanda, Kagame, when you go there. It's all because of discipline, okay? Strong-hearted person who loves his country, who is honest, who is patriotic, that will say that this is the way Ghanaians go. Look, I'm telling you, the situation we are in now, Ghanaians don't need change. Change needs Ghanaians. Repeat that, please. So again, Ghanaians don't need change. Ghanaians don't need change. Change needs, change needs us. It means that we've gone past change. The situation is worse. That the, the, the change itself now is saying that please come and let me change you. <laughs> yes. And when we talk to people, they all admit that we need change. Let me give you one example yesterday. My senior brother, from my constituency, who was a bishop in the Ghana Armed Forces, came to me, talking to me, take your time, this and that, your time will come. And I told them, Bishop, you know what? You, all of you are part of the problem. I am part of the problem. You are part of the problem. You don't want anybody to crack the whip. Oh, leave it to God. Oh, Nyamiba Ye. The person has made a mistake. You need to punish him to correct him or to serve as a deterrent. Ghanaians will come and beg. You have a priest coming to beg. You have a chief coming to beg. You have your relatives coming to beg. Did anybody beg Lee Guan Yu? Did anybody beg Kigami that they are doing well? So we are all part of the problem, Bishop. You are coming here. I have to reciprocate action. Whatever happened in parliament, I reciprocated action. And you see, you journalists, some of you are part of the problem. Some journalists in this country are so corrupt that nobody is bold to tell them. You sit here, when you take money, then you will say, Sole. Sole has go to the whole world and see if any journalist takes money and says Sole. You will say solidarity is bribe. The sole you will take, it depends on the amount of money that I give you that you write a good about me. It's wrong. We are all partners. We want to change the system. And you are taking sole to go and do your publication. Then you come back and criticize politician that he's corrupt. Please, we are all part of the problem. If journalists stop taking bribe as solely, if politicians stop taking bribe, if pastors, whatever, chiefs will stop pleading on behalf of people that have made mistakes, we can move this country. <laughs> the Bible says, love your neighbor as yourself. Therefore, any worker in this country, if you love this country, you will not steal state funds. If you love this country, you will not embezzle state funds. If you are honest, 
you are not going to embezzle state funds. If you are disciplined, when they say 8 o'clock, 8 o'clock, not 10. It is only in Ghana here that when the time is 8 o'clock, they come at 10. And you go and pray the next day. Please, we all have to change our mindset. If we want to move this country, we have been endowed with a lot of resources, but the managers of the resources, the problem. You see, Indians, Lebanese, Turkish, Chinese, British, they have shown us the way that Ghana, we are not poor. What are we doing as citizens of this country? to take our destiny into our own hands, to stop begging people for our survival. Why do you think Ghanaians have the mindset that we call it the poverty mentality, in a way? You know, like we declared HIPIC, highly indebted poor country. We say we're HIPIC. During the days that we were HIPIC, we had Lebanese Indians, foreigners here, making money, making profits. But Ghanaians were highly indebted. So what is causing the Ghanaian? Let me, let me give you, I won't let you land. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is simple. Yeah. First of all, we are naturally bombarded. Ghanaians are bombarded. Yeah, we are naturally bombarded. You like to take it or leave it. I'll tell you the gospel truth. Why are we, I expect you to ask me, why are we naturally bombarded? Why is it that an Indian will employ a Ghanaian and he will work to the best of his ability? But if I, a Ghanaian employs a Ghanaian, he will undermine my business to collapse. Mm. Look, the managerial sector in this country, the level of dishonesty, that is why Ghanaian businesses are not doing well. Now, watch the foreigners. When you go to Paris, for instance, what hurts my soul is that I went to Germany to wash plates. I went to America to drive taxi, gas station. And I come to my own country. The only thing for my citizens to do is minia jobs. When you go to Paris, you see the black people, the Ghanaians, cashiers, cleaning, and all those things. And you see Lebanese standing there watching because of his experience. The first time that they employ Ghanaians, they duped them. They nearly collapsed their business. So now, they said, no, with good managers, Ghana is a place to do business. So let me go and bring my own people. Now he's brought Lebanese as managers. Their businesses are flourishing. What it means is that Ghanaians, we have lost that managerial positions. Okay? Because the foreigners have taken over. All because of dishonesty. All because of indiscipline. When Kwabna died, I felt sorry. I just said to my son that they should create a sick bay. A nurse. That, those are the people I want to help. A nurse who cannot get a job came to my, of, uh, my job and asked my son to be a cleaner. So when he was taking her around, that is when he met Kwabna Kwachi and he fell on him and you know, he couldn't survive. So telling me the story, I said, listen, you have to create a sick bay. How can a nurse, your school fees is more than the university graduates. And now he, she's going to be a cleaner. Create a sick bay with what happened. Because he told me that the girl tested Kwabna's pulse and started giving CPR. So I just said, mm, we need this. We have a lot of space. Let's get a sick bay and put the, the nest on the premises. You see, but it is our own fault, our mindset. It is KSM, let's destroy it. It is Obroni, and it stems from our culture. When we were growing up, there was a story that, oh, 
if you are going to church on Sunday and you see a white, white man, man, you have seen Jesus Christ. So go, 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 go. Go. Yeah. It, it's an impact yeah. on our thinking that a white man today, yeah. Ghanaians feel white man is superior. Yeah. So we need to change the mindset. We need to be patriotic. We need to be honest. We need to be disciplined. And we have to challenge ourselves and say that we are going to make Ghana a better place. Go to British High Commission and see the number of Ghanaians going for visas. Why is it that all these youth are redundant here, but they go elsewhere and they have opportunities? That is my dilemma. That is why I decided to contest. And nothing will stop me. But first things first. I didn't win. I have to concentrate on business, mm. but never say never. <laughs> Maybe another opportunity will come. Another opportunity will come. Yeah. So, my brother, Ghana, with good leaders, bold leaders, charismatic leaders, selfless leaders, honest leaders, we can move this country. So, is it the case that since independence we haven't had good leaders selfless leaders i believe in Kwame Nkrumah although i'm up read my lips you can say it till the next day i believe in Nkrumah you see we did a, they did a lot of propaganda yeah. and looking at what Ghanaians are behaving their, our behavior today we needed Nkrumah that time yeah you can you can hang me i still stand by what i'm saying Driving from here, this afternoon I'll be going to Tema, motorway. Let's say a, a big thank you to President Kufuadu who is expanding it. You know, it's a little bit too late that when this road is done, he will not be there and NDC or MPP, nobody will give him credit. They won't. But so many years, motorway, it is only a Kufuadu who is now expanding it. Akosombo test us. Just say, everything that Kwame Nkrumah did for this country, he was over 200 years ahead of his peers or time. I know where the criticisms will come from, but that is me. I'm not a young man anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be 64 years. I've done my analysis, my studies, and he's a great man. No doubt about it. We have to emulate him, okay? And we have to have that drive and dream big, think big, do things big. We tend to give positions to myopic thinkers. Mm. Yeah, and the people yeah. that you appoint them don't even know how to make money themselves. Mm. How can they make money for the government? Mm. 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 That's the problem we have in this yeah. country. Yeah. And when can a Japan says this, they say, hey, it's a big mouth. He's destroying this. He's destroying that. But one day, posterity will judge us hmm. that there was one man who single-handedly fought for the country. I put my life on it. Threats here and there. But I don't care. Hmm. We got to live. You see, everywhere I go, Ken, Honorable Ken, show down, this and that. The moment I step out of this country, who cares about Ken Japan? That alone tells me that I have to make Ghana a better place for me to live. That is where they appreciate me. Mm -hmm. I go to America, they don't care about you. UK, they don't care about you. Europe, they don't care about you. After this program, let's work. And you see the number of people that will call me. I'm not swollen headed. But it tells me, it gives me a challenge that you cannot make America your home, Europe your home, but Ghana. That is why I will continue to criticize the wrongs in society. Mm, mm, mm. And I really don't care. Mm, Once I know mm. I'm speaking Speaking of criticizing the wrongs in society, you have actually criticized your party to understand that people believe that you didn't have any moral authority to want to lead that party that, that you have condemned. 
There was one quotation, if I may borrow your own words. Say MPP. You know, it's, it's good you brought this up. Yeah. You know, let me tell you. If there will be war in this country, it will be started by journalists. If there's war going to be in this country, it will be by journalists. Now look and check the history of Rwanda. A comment that a journalist made. And within 48 hours, 800,000 people died. What you've just said, let me tell you the story. And those who want to be diabolic will take that portion and say, oh, can I, Japan has insulted them. Yes, I did. I stand by it. I stand by it and read my lips. I'm not afraid of anybody. I said it. Now, let me tell you. I went to Adam FM morning program with Kwanza. He was the regional minister for Central Region. I went there, it was all over. When I was going to that studio, it was all over. That Honorable Safu Mafu has gone to say certain things that, you know, how did people get to know? Eastern Region, he was talking to Eastern Region MPP. And they recorded him. He was trying to give them the history, whether it's the right thing he said or not, or is the truth, that one. So whatever he said, our own people recorded Safumafu. Then they gave it to NBC radio stations. And they were playing it all over. So I got to the studio. They played the full tape. I said, what? So Safumafu was talking to MPP people. And he recorded him, put it on national television, radio. Maza, what do you mean, What do you mean, and you know, what people are afraid to say, I say it, and later I'm vindicated. You know that statement Honorable Safumafu made, and they brought it out, created the problem between Achims and Ashantis. To those who were at the meeting and recorded it, and gave it to radio stations to play, what was their motive? What was their motive? So, Kene Japong, who is saying that if you go to a meeting that we all have to, is an internal thing, then you take it out there to create confusion in the MPP party between Achims and Ashanti. And I say, say, yeah, Jimmy, Jimmy. You go and play that portion, leaving the whole details. Just because you want to be diabolic. You want to be diabolic. Me I'm kind. Me I'm kind. Me can Japan I'm kind. You know, until I'm a busy, I may have so rest in peace. I went to meet the council of elders. And she played that way. I won't ask him people for him because he for me. Now I'm bad. She played the full tape. I said, that is all I have. So you see, they have deceived you. Even that, I made reference to President Kufuado's meeting. It was eight minutes. I spoke eight minutes, and they took seconds to destroy Kenya Bon. So you journalists, you are part of the problem in this country. <laughs> you peddle lies, you sensationalize things, you don't tell the truth all because you want to destroy Kenya Japan. I'm sorry. Posterity will judge all of us. You know, when they listen to the tape, then they say, oh, no, this one, we have done a disservice to you. In fact, Mr. Kwajon Pianim even suggested that uh, I should go on air and explain these details. They didn't have that details. And I said, you know, I've said it several times. There's a can proverb who says, Obia ompe wasemono, or sa wasakura no achianepa. So I don't need to go and explain anything. So I said it, but in what context? 
That is what some Ghanaians fail to know because they consume information, they don't digest information. If you want to give Kenya Japan benefit of the doubt, I give you four W's as a journalist. I'm not the one, you are a seasoned journalist and therefore I can't educate you. But I can share this with you and see the difference you are going to make in society. If they come to tell you Kenya Japan has said this, first, the four W's. When did Kenya Japan say this? What did he say this? Why did he say this? And what was said? If you are able to analyze these four W's, you will not be stereotyped and you will know the truth. So when we are going to speak on this issue, you have, you are well informed of what actually transpired to trigger the statement. But here, you sensationalize things, Coffee TV or whoever, whatever transpired uh, in parliament, you say, uh, UTV, they were saying, I hate that, <laughs> a whole lot of things, without knowing what actually transpired. The person has come to apologize to me. Why did he come to apologize to me? But he has apologized to me, and therefore I'm not going to explain it. I see the way journalists put it out there. I'm telling you, I'll keep saying it. The journalists, some of you, you use your stomach, and they are big stomach. Big stomachs, the journalists, big stomach, in the, not physically that is big, but the test. <laughs> no money. <laughs> No money can satisfy you. Uh, so you go out there and peddle false information. They go there with arrogance. They think they, when they are behind the machines, the spirit that they get to lie, they have made politicians so timid. They are not bold to defend anything. They are scared. I am not. Read my lives. I'll tell you like it is. Because I also pay journalists. So I'm not afraid of any journalist in this country. Mm. We have to be bold. Mm. Okay, so if not, the way things are going, you see, we should be partners. And the truth should prevail at all times. Mm. That's the only way we mm. can move and develop this country. Mm. We are corrupt. You are corrupt. Everybody is corrupt. Where do we go then? That is why I decided I will contest and look, four years, I will change this country. <laughs> four years, I will change this country because I will crack the whip. If I appoint you today, if I have evidence against you, I will fire you. I will not promote you. <laughs> People that they tell them, oh, we are corrupt, oh, my God, oh, my God, you promote you more than <laughs> With impunity. I will not do that. I will fire you. And I don't care. You can be my wife. If you make a mistake, you are sacked. I'll disgrace you too, publicly. I'll give reason why I sacked my wife. To serve as a deterrent to others. Because we've pampered bad people in society that now they are controlling the system. This is not, Ghana is not a Ku Klux Klan. Ghana is a civilized country that we have to enshrine the word discipline. No, that I agree with you. As you see, I was just listening and listening. But anytime, anytime I talk about journalists, you keep quiet and you face to me. No, honorable. Honorable. But I can understand your frustration, you know, in terms of the four W's, the when, why, and all of those things, you know. But also, as an advice, you know, I, this is unsolicited advice, you know. Also, I also think that as politicians, in your communication, you have to understand that people have selective attention. You know, right now you're talking to me about how disciplined you are, and even if it's your wife, you, blah, 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 you know, you, you know. Somebody just selectively will just be drawn to the fact say, hey, when was in the Yiddish bar? Or but did you good book in the You see, uh-huh. So my advice to politicians is that in communicating, 
understand that because people have selective attention, know how you code certain things. You know, because for example, if you're saying, me, I'm for discipline, I won't spare anybody, I don't care if you're my family member, if you go wrong, I have to make sure you're disciplined. You know, as opposed to, me didn't cry, I'm going to say, you know, right away, yeah, I'm not quite Oh, so as you are advising okay. journalists, I'm also advising politicians. Fine. that <laughs> well, well taken. Well, well, well taken. Well taken. Yeah, you know. Well taken. Well taken. Well taken. Well taken. Well taken. But, but, oh, Charlie, this is getting interesting. But anything you get three, one, one, zero, three, eight. You get a bit of You get three episodes now. Eh? Don't, don't, don't worry, another time. Another time! <laughs> but the, the first time I spoke to him was 11 years ago. Yes. I think it was 11 years ago, yes! yes. <laughs> when, when we first spoke, and 11 yes. years later, we are still speaking. And all the things I said has come to pass. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah. I played back the tape yesterday and I was like, oh wow, you know. <laughs> the kind of Yes. Do you see yourself as the disciplinarian president one day? Oh, yes. Yeah? If they give me the nod. No, you see, my policy is, my term is four years. And therefore, any politician who thinks of the second term will not be effective. Why? Because he wants to go a second term. He cannot crack the whip. He thinks if he's strict and disciplined, mm. the people will not vote for him. I want only one term. And the one term, the development I'll bring in this country, Ghanaians will beg me to contest or stay. It has happened in my constituency. This time I use the looter that mm. I'm not going. <laughs> no. So if you know that your term is four years and you damn the consequence and develop this country, Ghanaians will give you another opportunity. Mm -hmm. But a situation where the moment they swear in, you are thinking of another term, then you can't. So we have to be bold. Development, development, development. How are we going to develop this country? Unless you conscientize the minds, especially the youth. You know, let me end here. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, what an Independence Day version of the show, man. Oh, no. <laughs> well, I've been hanging out with the uh, Honorable Kennedy. Is that? Oh, in Japan. Oh, in Japan. So oh, I hear that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it's been great hanging out, man. Eleven years later, yeah. you know, you're still firing on all cylinders, and I know this is not the last we are hearing from you. So you see why I can't be vice president. <laughs> 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 no, no, we are not a mate. We are mate. We don't be chicano. <laughs> anyway, folks, what can I say, man? Until we come back again next week, KSM in the campaign headquarters of Kennedy in Japan. And yet to be another campaign headquarters, maybe sometime soon, standing off here, saying the same words I've done for the last 25 years. We are out of let the whole world say. Yeah.